It was the first forecast since May, and it predicts deep recession across the EU. The effects of the coronavirus pandemic and the extended lockdowns have taken their toll. Our summer forecast uh, shows, uh, first of all, uh, that the road uh, to recovery uh, is still paved with uncertainty. EU GDP is expected to contract 8.3% this year before bouncing back by 5% in 2021. The latest forecast is worse than the last because lockdowns have gone on longer than expected and the damage has been worse in some countries than others, exacerbating widening divides between EU economies. In Italy, GDP will shrink by 11% this year. Growth of 6% is expected in 2021. Spain's economy is forecast to contract by nearly 11% this year before next year's growth of 7%. And in Germany, where COVID-19 cases and deaths are lower, GDP is expected to contract more than 6% before rebounding by over 5% next year. The uneven effects of the pandemic also risk deepening political divisions between EU members. Brussels has proposed an $800 billion rescue fund to be allocated according to need. But EU leaders are still arguing about how the money should be raised and if and when it should be paid back. The fragile state of the EU's recovery could also take a hit from a bad Brexit, with just a few months left for negotiators to forge a deal. If the transition period with the UK ends with no agreement, that would falsify the purely technical assumption of an unchanged trading relationship. And this would be a negative outcome for both sides, though particularly negative for the UK. EU leaders are gathering for their first face-to-face -face summit in Brussels later this month in a bid to reach a deal on the recovery fund. Tuesday's figures are a reminder of how quickly they need to act. Simon McGregor Wood, TRT World. Well, let's get more on this now with Karsten Brzezewski in Frankfurt. He's the global head of macro research and chief Eurozone economist at ING. Welcome back to Money Talks, Karsten. Now, as we know, it's only been two months since the European Commission delivered its last economic outlook, and that was bad enough. Can you tell us more about what's behind this latest downgrade? Yeah, it is extremely tough these days for forecasters to come up with really good, credible, with credible forecasts. Because more or less, what all these forecasts do is they they look in the in the rear mirror and they they try to to gather all the information that is currently available and then make some predictions based on uh, on, on on patterns from the past. The problem is with this crisis, it is an unprecedented crisis. So no one knows what pattern will actually hold in the future. So the downward revision now by these forecasts from the European Commission is really only driven by the fact that March was worse than expected, April was worse than expected, and that the rebound that we are seeing already now in more experimental data is not being found back in the data the European Commission uses. Now, as we heard in Simon's story, Italy, France and Spain are expected to be among the hardest hit. Why are their economies suffering more than others? The lockdowns in Italy, in Spain and also in France were much stricter than in most northern European economies. That is reason one. Reason two is the lifting of the lockdown measures came later than in northern European countries like Germany, like Austria. So this also has a big impact. And then it is the kind of the, um, the, the, the size and the structure of the economies. When you look at the southern European economies, they are extremely exposed to tourism. And if there is one sector which will be extremely hit hard by this crisis, it is the tourist industry. It's also the small businesses which are of more importance in southern European countries than in the northern European countries. So there is a series of reasons why the, the crisis is worse in the southern European countries, but also why the, the, the pace of the recovery will be faster and stronger in northern European countries compared with the southern European countries. Now, we're seeing some lockdown measures being reimposed in some areas of the EU, including in countries like uh, Germany and Spain. Are you worried that uh, the rise in cases we're seeing in some parts of the EU could actually jeopardise the economic recovery? 
Oh, definitely. Um, I, I think because you know, we will we will now have a rebound in May and in June. But the biggest the biggest question is what will happen in the second half of this year, and if there will be a second wave of lockdown measures. You know, you know it depends how you do you, how do you define an increase in infections. Is this still wave number one? Or is it already the second wave? So the biggest question for the economy will be, will governments react with another wave of lockdowns? And if they were, and that's what we do see in Australia, for example, currently, what we do see locally in Germany and other European um, economies. So yes, if we were to see the second wave of the lockdown measures, all these forecasts that we've heard so far, I think would have to be revised downward significantly. We're many months into the pandemic now and the EU still hasn't managed to agree on an overarching recovery plan. Do you think they finally will when they meet in Brussels next week? I at least hope they will. Um, and to give them some credit, we at least have had many national solutions already. So it is not as if nothing has happened. Um, and there is now also um, some pan-European, pan-Eurozone agreement at least already on loans, on solidarity. And I think the important thing is that we already saw in June is that even on this topic of the European Recovery Fund, there is also an agreement that it is needed. So, you know, knowing Europe, it also means it is small steps, getting closer to the finish line. But I hope that at least next week, we will get a better impression of what it will look like. And I have the impression that, yes, we are moving closer to each other. Um, so it will be a combination of grants and loans. And then the big question is, will there be any conditionality attached to these transfers or not? Okay, Karsten Brzezewski from ING, thank you so much again for joining us from Frankfurt.